this is Charlotte Pierce. I'm the producer of Ready Row USA podcast and live stream. And I'm really excited today. We have one of uh, my favorite people in rowing and one of, she's the executive director of Philadelphia City Rowing, which is a, an amazing program for, just for kids, right, Caitlin? Yep, just yep. youth. Youth, yeah. And has been, um, involved at my rowing club, which is in the uh, fake back backdrop behind me. <laughs> but let, uh, let's let turn to Caitlin and get a little sense. You have an event coming up that we want to promote. We're, this is one of our first uh, pop-up podcasts. We're doing these little bits um, to promote various things and, and grow the sport of rowing. So Caitlin, tell us a little bit about your background and what and the programs that you have at uh, Philadelphia City Rowing. And I'll run our little um, slideshow up here. Sure. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm uh, happy to be your your pop up guinea pig. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, yes, I am the executive director at Philadelphia City Rowing. Prior to coming here, I spent some time up at um, the beautiful boathouse uh, in your background, CRI, where I learned a lot from everyone there. Um, so PCR, we are a high impact youth development organization here in Philadelphia. Um, and we use the sport of rowing as a vehicle to empower students in the school district of Philadelphia specifically uh, to reach their highest potential both on and off the water. Um, youth here in Philly have historically been excluded from the rowing community. Um, so up until PCR was formed in 2010, there were actually no public school students competing in the city championships that were taking place in their city. And what, um, up until how long ago? 2010. You're kidding. <laughs> I guess it would have been 11 because that was, was the, the first yeah. season, yeah, we raced in. Um, yeah, so, so we try to break down the barriers of entry into the sport of rowing um, and provide access to a inclusive and holistic program uh, for students in the district that kind of not only gives them a highly competitive rowing program that's kind of on par with their peer, uh, their peers in kind of the wealthier school districts or private schools in the area, um, but also works to level the playing field in the classroom and provide them with resources that the school district can't uh, offer. So we do academic support SAT mm -hmm. prep, we have a full-time guidance and college counselor who helps everybody with that side of things. Um, we do an environmental education program, which we'll get to talk about later. Mm -hmm. um, and then we kind of provide all these other services like snacks, uniforms, transportation tokens, um, swim lessons, stuff like that. So that just the, the general cost of participating in a sport is not an added burden to the families. And do you have, uh, are parents involved in this or do you have like other rowing clubs in the area that, like I know sometimes at CRI, the um, the masters uh, rowers will help with tutoring and stuff like that. I don't, you know. They yeah, so there. we get a lot of volunteers, um, but that mm -hmm. is that is kind of one of those things that makes our funding model a little bit uh, different. Our programs are completely free. so. The kids mm -hmm. don't pay anything. We don't receive mm -hmm. any government funding. All of it's fundraised. Um, and that like at a play at some of the other boathouses in the country who have programs, inclusive programs like PCR, like there are other programs that kind of are a source of revenue that can help offset the cost. We don't, yeah. um, we don't have that because our, we just have our public school kid program right now. Um, and so we do get some tutors. We actually are working with UPenn right now to get mm -hmm. uh, their team is doing some tutoring with our kids. And we've had um, other members of different clubs in the city come in as tutors, volunteer coaches, that kind of stuff. And we have some uh, some pictures up here that your uh, <laughs> yeah your colleague Maddie gave us, which is just wonderful. Um, and this relates to your 10K challenge that's coming up, I think, right? Because the yeah, kids are aware they're very environmentally conscious. Yeah, so we um, over the like over the course of the ten years that PCR has been in existence, like what we found is one of the biggest things uh, that keeps kids involved is having a place-based connection to the river. 
uh, and their community. And so like we specifically have a, an environmental education program that teaches kids about the river and um, helps them become good citizens of their neighborhood, the park, the land, so that they create, mm -hmm. there's like an inherently a, a sense of ownership and pride in just being in that space and being connected to the river, the rowing community, those sort of things. So these pictures are um, students, uh, they're doing a, a cleanup that day, cleaning up trash from the park nearby that eventually probably would flow into the river. And, and these are rowers here, right? Yes, those are yeah. our rowers. They just look, I don't know who took the pictures, and, but they just look so, so like they just, they're so involved and they care about each other. I don't know, <laughs> I'm just projecting, but it just, it's a really nice, nice scene. Uh, if you're just listening on audio, uh, I think um, this slideshow or some of the pictures are on philadelphiacityrowing.org, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. they, so our students come from, um, our high school program comes from 20 different high schools. Mm -hmm. And so to your point, it's really fun to see them all mm -hmm. come together because they're very likely not going to know some of these kids ever. They are not in the same school. They might not be in the same neighborhood and they come from all across the city to, you know, be in this program and support each other. And it's, it's fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, um, and, and tell me a little bit, uh, wanted to, you know, how you landed at Philadelphia City Rowing. I know you've been up in this area quite a bit and you started, did you grow up in the Boston area? Yeah, so I, I grew up in Massachusetts. Um, I rowed at uh, Cornell after that and then um, was coming to Boston for grad school um, mm -hmm. to do a master's in energy and environmental analysis at uh, BU. Um, and I was rowing out of Riverside at that time. So I uh, knew Bruce uh, Smith, who's the previous executive director at CRI, um, mm -hmm. now at Hydro, very successful. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I have one. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, it keeps me motivated, I tell you. It's, it's really nice. Yeah. So I, so I knew Bruce from Riverside. He was coaching the high performance mm -hmm. group there, and mm -hmm. I talked to him about coaching. And, um, you know, I ended up doing the IRL at CRI, which is their master's mm -hmm. level coaching education program. In 2013, wasn't it? Uh, yes, you're correct, yeah. 2013. Mm -hmm. um, and then I coached at Boston College and Simmons for a while um, while I was doing fundraising for CRI for the their Row Boston para mm -hmm. and um, military program. And then I kind of took a short break to, to use my environmental science background and worked at Earthwatch for a year. Um, and during that time, the posting for, for my current job came up at, at PCR and I was like, well, darn, that's just, <laughs> it's going to be yeah, right up there. Might as well try. <laughs> I was telling you before, you know, I was just reading through your bio and it was like, this, this woman is never going to leave rowing again. <laughs> it's so cool. It's great what you're doing there. And, um, you know, I'm hoping to come down to the head of the school call this year, but We'll see if they have it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's get into a little bit about, uh, is there anything else you wanted to, to say about your programs and, you know, the, before we get into the 10K challenge that's coming up? Oh, I mean, I'll just tell you this morning was our first morning back on the water after 18, 17 months. And so they're back. Um, we haven't started taking a lot of new kids or doing a lot of recruiting, but um there's any Philly Philly people listening summer camps will be opening soon and uh we hope students will be eager to get on the water <laughs> and are they they in eights and, and fours and quads and all that now or? yeah so we're primarily in eights um we're in at the moment because of COVID we're in like some smaller groups but we have everybody's in masks all the time but we are rowing in bigger boats right I know um I just joined the board of the AB crew here mm -hmm. And spy pond and um they're just they're sticking with the small boats for the spring yeah we don't um we don't really have small boats unfortunately yeah <laughs> <laughs> they did they buy their bus yeah <laughs> no you gotta work with what you have because like at yeah. cri i loaned my boat out for their juniors program they were taking groups of eight with one coach mm -hmm. and i i'm not sure i think 
maybe by May they're planning on getting some of the bigger boats out. But, um, but anyway, you know, they borrowed a lot of the boats from the personal boat owners here. You know, so. Yeah. Let me get the, uh, when should prep the, uh, the, the 10K challenge thing and um, I will get it up on the, the screen share. Um, so we are about to kick off our third annual PCR 10K challenge. Um, and it, it, over the last three years, it's kind of become one of our bigger fundraisers and uh, social media campaigns to help raise awareness mm -hmm. um, and funding for our program. So it started in 2019. We received a $10,000 challenge grant from an anonymous donor. Um, yeah, I called it the traditional, but I didn't realize it was that new, but I guess now in three years yeah. later, it's traditional. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be tradition, I guess. <laughs> Um, so we had received a challenge grant and we were trying to think of ways to not only leverage the funds, but also kind of build a sense of community and support for our student athletes. Mm -hmm. um, so we were like thinking of ideas, throwing them around. And I think the ice bucket challenge had made like a revival that summer. And so we were like, you know what, rowers, they like to exercise. Let's build yeah. off this framework. We're going to have them do something silly similar to dumping an, a bucket of ice on their head and then challenging friends to do the same. Um, and so we just made that Erga 10K, challenge three friends, make a donation. Um, okay. And it turned out it turned out to be a bigger hit than we expected. So, you know, we had hundreds of people sharing like inspirational captions and team photos and making wow. music videos um, across the community. And, you know, that was really great for us. it's it's fun for our, you know our student athletes to see that kind of support coming in from from all across the country and so um and this is all it's it's erg or water or yeah rowing yeah. cycling oh it's like the um that went up in new hampshire um yeah so like it's it started out as erging but over the years we've wanted to broaden the appeal mm -hmm. and and make it accessible to non-rowers or other people in the fitness community who just want to support yeah. our organization and um you know our student athletes and so last year we did a thousand rep challenge during because it was right at the start of covid so like it was different body weight exercises just cool um yeah we're flexible <laughs> nice yeah and uh so but the idea is get three friends and then you oh yes yeah, so the idea is, is you erg Erg, 10,000 meters, run, cycle, run, swim, whatever you want, um, mm -hmm. 6.2 miles. Take a sweaty selfie after you complete it and then share your photo on social media. Um, okay. You can say nice things about sport-based youth development or why having equitable access to the sport is important mm -hmm. to you, something like that. And t challenge three of your friends to do the same. And then, of course, if you're in a place to donate to the program and can help us, um, sustain our programs and our operations that would be great so and this year because of the environmental focus uh yeah. you have this hashtag is that which one would you like people to use the 10k challenge both, <laughs> both, both. okay both. yeah this year um i don't know if I, I don't know if people widely know this but april is earth month <laughs> yeah. earth day is also in april but so we're we're kind of trying to piggyback off of that and then just the the our kids are really passionate about the environment we have kids uh that are really involved in sunrise movement and like we talked about before and just kind of sustaining the schuylkill river and the watershed for years to come so we're building off their passions and earth month to kind of bring a lens of sustainability and environmental justice to the challenge so if anybody wants to add that in if you want to like show us your you know stainless steel water bottle or like a <laughs> compost pile after you're done doing your 10k or um you're one of our favorite things <laughs> yeah one of our favorite things is plogging which is where it's a swedish term where you go for a run and pick up trash at the same time like yeah. these are all highly encouraged and uh just are going to add to the fun <laughs> oh thank you so much for for no i'm i'm just like i'm so excited about it so i'm going to I'm going to do it. I think um, it starts April 1st and it goes through April yeah. 30th. Yep. The whole month. And, um, so I just wanted to wrap up here. Is there anything else that you'd like us to talk about or you, that you'd like to um, say about Philadelphia city rowing and 
what you've got planned for the next your five year plan? <laughs> oh my, my five year plan, yes. Definitely. <laughs> um, I think it was, I was a minute. So yeah, I was telling you this before. Like we're we're in an outdoor space right now, so like our five year plan, we definitely need to grow our staff. Um, I'm right now the only full time employee, oh, um, and so we serve 300 kids a year with one full time employee. And so looking to grow that. Um, we want to double the size of our middle school program and we're looking to add support services so that we can better serve the student athletes who, who yeah. need additional services, stuff like hot meals, laundry on site, um, expanded educational programs, that kind of stuff. That is amazing. I mean, for the, um, you know, just to hear the, the, the staffing, you know, you have a large voice and you know, you have a very incredible reputation out Thank there. You. So, yeah, I mean, more power to you and anything we can do to help you, you know, get the word out about your programs and, and plans and, you know, kids that if they want to come on and talk about what it's like to, you know, cox an eight on the Schuylkill River, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, just let us know. I'm, uh, I'm going to wrap up here, but uh, my, 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 uh, production company for the podcast is Pierce Press. And we always put a blog post up about our podcast. So that's uh, Ready Row USA, Ready Dash Row Dash USA. And uh, Caitlin, we just appreciate you so much. And thank you for having me. <laughs> Let us know how we can help. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.